All right, we are live. Hey guys, how you doing? So uh, we're looking at the light here. I think it's light enough. Yeah. If it's not light enough, say something on the screen. So we're live here with Marie Emmerich. And if you listen to the Low Carb Podcast, Low Carb Leader Podcast, you may have, uh, have heard her podcast, so welcome. Thank you for having me. So we're gonna talk food. Food, if you have any questions, throw them out there. If you are wondering, if something is truly ketogenic, we want to know. Bone broth, can you have that? Is it fasting? Ask us. What do you think? Bone well, broth, yay or nay? Uh, I don't know. I, fasting? Oh, fasting, I'm like a true, I'm a true water yeah. faster. Me yeah. too. Yeah. I know, but you read all this stuff that you can have bone broth or coconut oil and you're still fasting. Heck no. Even bone broth has too much L-glutamine in it that can uh, raise your blood glucose. And that's why your hunger goes away. Yeah, yeah. So tell the audience uh, what a ketogenic diet looks like. Well, we all agree that sugar is inflammatory, right? Everybody nod, yep. Um, so we wanna keep the sugar out of our diet, but what a lot of people don't understand is even a complex carbohydrate like wild rice or even sweet potatoes, that type of stuff. Once it enters your bloodstream, that turns into sugar. It's broken down. Our bodies are pretty quite simple. So we have to limit that. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can't store protein. So anything in excess is going to turn into sugar too. You want to have a right amount, I mean, to build muscle, right? Um, but there's a point where there's too much. And so what's left? There's only three macu macronutrients. Do you know what's left? Fruit. It's a naughty F word three letters. Oh, fat. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> fat is the only thing that's left. What, what I live on. <laughs> yeah, right? The what we live on. So it's a, it's a high fat, moderate protein, low carbohydrate approach. But when you're in ketosis, that high fat part of it, even a lean person has a lot of body fat to use for fuel. So you don't have to worry about eating fat just to get your macros in because those macros can come from your own body fat. Right. So even a, a baby is in ketosis. So yeah, what I was, yeah. It, talk about that a little bit. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to adjust this to try to get a little more. Yeah, oh, that was a lot more light right there. Oh, there we go. It, Stand up closer to it, then it'll be light. Um, I think that's better. Well, breast milk is primarily made up of fat and cholesterol. However, when a baby is formula fed, if you even look at the ingredients, a lot of it is fructose and it's a more of a sugar type formula um, but babies need to eat so often um, that they're usually naturally in ketosis if they go two hours without eating as we age that time increases which I find interesting so um, you know like um, you know four-year-old it might be four hours and it increases as we age so, so a baby's in ketosis most of the yeah, if, especially if they're as breastfed. They're breastfed, yeah. breastfed, and um, you know, it depends on how long they go between feedings. You know, you don't want them, but you know, a lot of times throughout the night, if they can, um, sometimes we, as mothers, we get really excited when they can like la when you can sleep the whole night. Yeah. Then a baby was, would be f for sure in ketosis at that point. Is it bad? No, it's a good thing. Yeah. So if you don't know Maria, she has nine cookbooks, oh. right? It, well, is that they're not all cookbooks. There's two nutritional guides. Um, keto adapted and secrets to a healthy metabolism. Those are just nutritional guides. Is the first you mentioned the first cookbook you did that looks like a church, church cookbook. cookbook? Does that count as one of the nine? No, that one does not. <laughs> that one's out of the loop. You can't even. I couldn't even get a copy. I had asked my mom for a copy just because it's out of print. Did it have the plastic spiral bottom? Yeah, it did. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. And uh, oh, looks super funny. Yeah. Well, let, uh, talk about um, talk about the crock pot theory you have because I think that's a that's a really good tip for people that are pressed for time for sure I mean we're all really busy which I really don't like that excuse because I'm working with clients all the time um, I'm putting out three books with Victor Belt plus I'm writing um, two books with uh, Jimmy Moore and Dr. Nally Dr. Rosedale um, and we homeschool our children yeah I'm very busy but I feel we're all busy. That's a bad excuse. I have bad priorities. That's what people should tell me. Because it is all about priorities. Instead of 
spending time watching television, things like that, you know, I prioritize making sure that we have good food. So sorry if I'm being harsh, but it is, I mean, we all make priorities and we need to start saying no to people that are not feeding our soul and say yes to taking time to make healthy food. So one of the tricks we do to make that a success is my husband's awesome. Hey, Craig, I know you're watching. Um, Craig Emmerich's out there. He's awesome. He helps clean up dinner so I can prepare dinner for the next night. Um, I love my mom to death, but even at the young age of five, when I was in kindergarten, I could tell that she was really anxious. Like, I don't know what we're having for dinner. I didn't plan anything and I could feel that. So she passed that down to me where I, I want to have a chill life. I don't want any more stress. So I always plan dinner the night before. So Craig's cleaning up dinner and I usually fill the crock pot and I have three beloved slow cookers. I guess it's called crock pots in the Midwest because you're yeah, from Iowa. Yeah. Slow cookers are for the rest of you out there. So I have three beloved slow cookers. I usually put a main dish, side dish, and a dessert in them. Just so you know, <laughs> Craig Emmerich, yes I am, love you too. He is the best. And I don't wanna, before um, Shannon's question goes, does the coffee drink really work? Should it be used as a meal replacement? So. Never, no, gotta eat your calories. When you drink your calories, they don't signal hormones that tell you that you're full and satisfied. You know, chew your food. Chewing your food is awesome. It's so much more satisfying. And those liquid calories go down like butter. Yeah, <laughs> Too and, much. And Shirley says hi, Maria. Hi, Shirley Germain, <laughs> love you. She's from Woodbury. I hope you're staying warm in the blizzard. Hey, uh, for those watching, Craig and Shirley, is it too dark? I'm, I'm looking into the screen and Craig, it looks dark. help us out. Well, maybe we should Shannon get says, closer. thank you. That's... Ah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm just going to... See, it turns, see what, when you get closer, then... Isn't, yeah, isn't that weird? Weird. Yeah, it turns, it turns really uh, light as soon as... Um, it, it, Shirley, you said it's dark? You know what? That's in the background. Let's sit over by We're me. We're going to try... That might have done it. Is that better? Hey, everybody. There it is. It's better. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, cool. Okay, so. Um, All right. But so awesome. I fill those slow cookers up, and then all I have to do in the morning is take them out of the fridge and plug them in in the shell, and then, you know, six, eight hours later, food is ready. And they, you know, make everything fantastic, and they make great leftovers, so we often do, like, a huge batch. But... Um, so that's just, if you don't like to cook, that's what I like to recommend. And I'm going to give a plug. I have a whole slow cooker book, and that's probably, everybody says that's their favorite. Like, if that one's a self-published book, so it's not perfect, but the recipes kind of are. They're, I mean, I even have, like, cake, you know, a coffee cake made in the slow cooker. So that's, if you don't like to crazy, bake, yeah. you know, it's kind of a foolproof way. Yeah, I eat raw macadamia nuts. That's that's my idea of cooking. Oh, Is that... that's right. You said that you <laughs> yeah. like bulletproof coffee yeah, and nuts. I, yeah. So um, there was a question about drinking your calories. And so... Yeah, that's what I was saying is that they're so not satisfying. Um, you know, that the drinking your calories, it's just, it doesn't register those hormones to tell you that you're full. If you're really hungry enough, cook a meal, man. How hard yeah. are eggs? You can do that. I can even do that. Yeah. I, I cook my eggs in a crock pot. <laughs> no, I don't, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can do hard boiled eggs in an Instapot, and it takes about three minutes in that pressure cooker, and they, they peel really easy then. So, you talked about uh, some favorite recipe of your family a chocolate something that you make five oh, the flourless chocolate tort yeah tell tell people how to make that Just... oh my gosh it's so easy that flourless chocolate tort if you go to maria mindbodyhealth.com search flourless chocolate tort you'll find the recipe um gosh i should i need to make a video of it because it's so easy it's like five eggs seven ounces unsweetened baking chocolate um your natural they're not they're not fake sweeteners, the natural sweetener. I like to use Swerve, but you could like substitute whatever. Um, a pinch of salt. Oh gosh, it's so easy. I can't even think of what else is in there, but you just mix it all together. It's five ingredients. And then you could either make them in little muffin tins and then they bake really fast, like five minutes. But I usually do, uh, you know, like an eight inch pie pan and I under bake it a little bit. So it's kind of melty in the middle. Fantastic. 
If yeah. you're craving chocolate, that's usually a magnesium deficiency. So you want to do a good quality high um, chelated magnesium, not magnesium oxide. Don't go to Target and buy that because you're just going to get diarrhea and you're going to be like, Maria told me to take this <laughs> stuff. No wonder I'm losing weight, right? No, you want to do a good one. But most people are very deficient in that. But um, if you crave chocolate and you're like buying these low carb chocolate bars, you, it's way better to make your own chocolate. Yeah, because so Atkins has actually some pretty good tasting bars, but never had I, them. I know what they do is they put um, alcohol, the sugar alcohol, sugar alcohol. You're gonna have gas. Yeah, which just brings down the net carbs. Talk talk about that oh, a little count bit. Count total carbs. Don't count yeah. the net carbs. Uh, Paul, you said uh, hello, and uh, bulletproof coffee can be 400 plus calories. That is almost seven eggs, and I, oh, that's that's from Craig. Craig, I want to tell you, I, I. I live on bulletproof coffee, so um, yeah, I know, I know. I only drink it tw a couple times. In You've the morning. never had a weight problem ever, have you? No. See, we're talking to like Fatty McFatterton. You can't, <laughs> I can't do that because I mean, you have to consider your calories. Um, and someone who is lean, it depends on what your goals are. True, absolutely. Because you know? it's a lot of calories, but the difference is I. I, I kind of do it for a reason because I want MCTs and I want my ketones. It helps my ketones. But, then, but what? But then I don't eat till three. Hey, Craig, are ketones, hide lumblers important? No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm an athlete, so my ketone numbers are naturally lower because I'm burning them. That is true. They're leaving my body. So someone who is an athlete and really depressed that they're only getting into like maybe one or like 0.5 in ketones, and they are like, oh man, this stinks. How am I going to get higher? Don't worry about it. It's because you're, they're leaving your body because you're using them for right. running and lifting weights. It's good, you know, so don't get hung up on the number. Um, get, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you're doing that, everything's good. But again, like, you know, if you're an athlete trying to get energy or we, we had, um, I listened to the performance guy. Yeah. The first talk was excellent. And he talked about, um, you know, using ketones for these ultra marathons. Right. And sure, he had a little bit more carbohydrates than I would do, but he's a very lean man. And he actually talked about his diet with carbohydrates when he was an awesome athlete. And he looked fit and ripped. And he talked about how unhealthy he was at that time um, and how much pain and joint pain he was in. And he was doing these ultra marathons and stuff. And now he does it in ketosis. Right. And how he doesn't hurt ever. Um, and I just thought that was fascinating. But, you know, like you said, if you're doing the MCT oil and stuff for, you know, more energy, then it's... Yeah, I think you make a good, very good point. Because if you're trying to lose weight... 90% of people are. Right. I, I, I'm doing it for a different reason. Yes. You know, I want to see the mental clarity. And yeah. I, 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 but I eat, if you probably add up my total calories, it's probably far less than what most people eat because... I only eat now between like three o'clock in the afternoon and seven, and I don't eat that much. And so, so yeah, so we're, we're kind of talking all over the place, but right. for, if you're looking to lose weight, yeah. then absolutely there's, you're putting a big chunk of butter and MCT is like 140 calories or whatever. You're, you are talking Craig, like, it's like a milkshake. Eight, 800 calories by the end of time. And they taste, you know, it tastes like candy. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. if you, it, like Craig said, seven eggs, it's hard to eat seven eggs. Yeah. You're, you're going to get full and you're going to be like, okay, I'm, a do I'm done. You know? So right before we started, you were talking about finding good keto advice and cookbooks and, and yeah. how you have to be careful about what is presented to you. Talk a little bit about that. Well, when you search online and you know, when I first started a decade ago, you know, I thought, oh, flax is a great you know, way to bind things and like um, use as a flour replacement and stuff. But we now know that flax, chia, all of those types of things, not only are they going to increase the um, total carbohydrates by a lot because they're a... It affects Facebook Live. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they're probably like, why is he posting? <laughs> That's great. But not only is that going to increase that fiber, which anybody with, you know, diverticulitis and stuff knows that. That's a no-no. Um, but it also um, is very estrogenic, flax and chia. If you watch like breast scans after people, uh, women, um, and even men, it's very estrogenic in men. You know how like men have those big beer bellies? It's not beer belly, it's an estrogenic belly. So you have to be very careful of things that are estrogenic, such as you know alcohol is, um, 
flax, chia, certain foods are going to turn that estrogen receptor on and we don't want that. So that's just why when you're searching sites, um, you know, some people will count. It's only two net carbs, but the fiber is like eight, nine or ten right. per serving. And if I'm trying to stay 10 to 20 a day, that's that's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. You that's, got a question? Uh, yeah. So Sarah says, why is such a narrow window for eating? We need to find our own hours that work for us. But yours seems extreme. Um, Good question, but I have, keep in mind, I have experimented for like five years with this stuff. So I've done like five day water fast. I've, I've done three day fast. I, I eat in a 12 hour window. I've tried every single thing. The reason I'm doing a narrow window now is just really because I'm, I'm purely keto now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not that hungry. Yes. And so I don't, I would have to force myself to eat and I just, I'm not hungry till two o'clock. Yeah. When I'm working with clients, I don't start them with fasting whatsoever, um, just because the whole idea of eating, you know, let's get into ketosis. Um, I actually have a, a poor review on um, one of my books on Amazon, and it's because I'm always full and I'm never hungry. And it's like, that's the point, you know, but it doesn't happen, especially if you have any type of leptin resistance. You know, you're going to really some people are always hungry and we want to try to stave that off. And for me, I was taught that you need to eat every two hours in order to fuel your metabolism. That is only if you are a glucose burner. So switching from a glucose burner to an actual fat adapted burner, so what you're doing in lipolysis, can take months. Um, you will notice you'll get into ketosis after days of eating keto. Some people faster, some people slower. But to actually be in lipolysis is going to take a long time. Um, and in that case, it gets very easy to fast. And there's no judgment if you don't want to get into intermittent fasting. It just takes you to the whole next step. Um, some people force themselves to eat breakfast when they're not hungry. It's like, why? Is it right. because you're listening to old nutrition advice that you have to eat that to fuel your metabolism? I say wait until you're hungry enough to make a meal, not eat the macadamia nuts. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, then have your first meal when you're hungry. A lot of times people are like, well, I'm not hungry until 11 or 12. It's like, bingo, you're getting into that whole lipolysis part. Your body's using your fat stores for fuel. And then eat your second meal when you're hungry enough. And people love that because think about how much less time it takes to, you know, cook a meal and clean it up and right. all of that stopping work to you know, have to eat or eat a snack um, maybe that's why we've been accomplishing so much I don't know I know you know and uh, I had a Facebook live with dr. Jason Fung this morning we were talking about sleep oh man and, and people on uh, that are ketogenic sleep less and he says he has his patients come to him and kind of complain and say I can't but I used to be able to sleep eight hours and he's like but are you are you energetic when you wake up? Do you feel good? And they're like, yeah, I feel great. And he's like, well then. Oh, so they're saying they're not sleeping eight hours now that they're keto? Yeah, and so they sleep. Are sleep. they female? No, this is kind of across the board. Okay. But he said, you don't, you don't need to sleep eight hours. He said, if you sleep six or seven, whatever you feel good okay. with. But uh, I think. So I believe that sleep helps with your fasting. Because um, I'm I'm going on a, uh, two new, two nights without really good sleep because I flew in from Hawaii and it was an overnight flight and the night before my son had was waking me up anyway um, so two nights without sleep I feel like a bottomless pit. You're hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah. More than what I usually am, um, and that's because. Um, after six hours of sleep dep, you know if you're going on three days without good quality sleep, your cells start to look like a diabetic. Yeah, I, I mean, I've since I've been keto, I actually, I go to bed at 10 and I seriously wake up at 4.30 or 5. I feel great. Mm -hmm. um, where I used to maybe sleep another hour. Yeah. And I think his point was, he was just saying that people will say, I used to sleep seven and now I sleep six. Oh boy. Is that a problem? And he's like, does... I guess we're talking... You're, 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 you just haven't slept. Well, yeah, I guess we believe two different things. So we'll just maybe move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Paul, what is your opinion on all these exogenous ketone products in the market? You can talk on that. Yeah. And I don't, um, I've just, I don't really know that much about them. I, I have read that. What is it for, Paul? Let's ask yeah. him that. What is it for? 
Because it's different. I just heard, um, actually, the podcast I just had, um, the Danny Vega, who's the athlete, he, he said um, it's good for some people, but the majority of people it does not affect in a positive way. I've never taken them. Um, if it's for weight loss, I gain weight taking it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if Paul's still on, but if he asks. Okay. Um, if it was, I mean, if my, um, if I had cancer, if I wanted it for athletic performance, if I had depression, I would take that before antidepressants. I would try that. But if it's for weight loss, which a lot of people claim that it's for, um, I don't know. I don't yeah. like the question. Yeah, I don't know. Can no, we move on? I honestly don't know enough about it. So there's no other questions but uh, right now. But um, so we'll, we'll talk a little personal stuff. You, you've been living in Maui mm-hmm. for the last several months, and now you don't get to go back right now? No, you, you have to go to... not till next year. I, I am going to Wisconsin, getting the cold therapy on, which it is freezing here. It's like three degrees. Okay, Paul this says uh, using it to start healthy eating and losing weight. Oh, yeah. You know, you could use it as a transition um, because it's going to help lower those cravings and stuff. So I would use it as a transition um, into, because it's totally going to lower your cravings. It's going to increase that serotonin and you're going to feel super positive. A lot of times you get more energy so you can start working out. So I like to use it with people to help into keto, but nothing is going to cover up. I guess I get frustrated when people say, just eat the darn muffin and then take this. Oh, absolutely. Um, Because you cannot cover up a muffin. Yeah. uh, My understanding is exogenous ketones, you have to be low carb ketogenic in order for them to work. Is that correct? Well, no, I've been seeing people do Facebook lives where they eat chocolate cake and they're like, look, I just drink this drink and my ketones, they'll show them testing are low. Or I mean, they're showing that they are in ketosis, lower numbers, but doesn't matter. Is that lipolysis? No, but is it ketosis? Sure. Um, yeah. Nothing can cover up a bad diet, you know? Right. You gotta focus on the food first. That's why you need to prioritize the whole cooking. Thing. So Paul, the last pa- podcast on the Low Carb Leader podcast, Danny Vega talks specifically, he's an athlete, a power lifter. He, he talks specifically about um, exogenous ketones and how Dr. Oz's raspberry ketones <laughs> are not ketones. And he talks about what you should look for in real ketones. Yeah. He also mentioned that the whatever the big company is, has contracted with the one supplier. So it's, it's looking like oh. it's going to become one. one. Because they're coming out all over the woodwork. Yeah. Julian's Bakery now has them. It's cheap. I mean, it's all over the place. But I don't know. It's expensive, too. Yeah, yeah. I think that you just caloric restriction, mm-hmm. eat the right things, mm-hmm. and if you're trying to get into ketosis, that's going to put you into it. But I think you bring up a good point. It's what is the purpose of why you want to get into right. it? You know, I'm. It's more of a with me. It's more of a result yeah. of intermittent fasting and eating healthy, mm-hmm. and then eating high fat. And yeah. I'm in ketosis. I'm not just trying to get those numbers Mm -hmm. it's just a after effect is yeah because i want to be healthy right right you you know we look at why are you doing ketosis we're we're a very honestly we're a vain society everybody wants to fit into their clothes and look good and you know we, we all do i'm not judging um but you know like we need to worry about what's going on internally you know how are how is our lowering heart disease and all of that that's like super important so that's like why everybody should eat keto you know people ask like oh your your kids eat keto you don't let your kids eat such and such it's like stop judging me and i won't judge you you well that's awesome because in in the podcast you talked about um you know how uh, dr fung was talking about this today how we we have a system now where it's kids get up they eat breakfast then they have a mid-morning snack and then they eat lunch and then they eat a snack and then he said even in their soccer games they have to take a break and to eat their snack Uh, we experienced that in hawaii when my my kids they would make they're six and seven and they would make so many friends on the beach and they would play with them all day and a lot of these kids they'd come out of the water every half an hour to start eating or having a snack and my kids 
they're just standing there because and sometimes my son will say well i'm not hungry for lunch and i was like well when you are hungry come and tell me because i have food for yeah, you." yeah that's what i was actually going to say is t talk a little bit about that how your your kids are like i'm not even hungry for lunch i'll just so they kind of eat on demand right right they 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 tell us when they're hungry um you know sometimes it's like okay we need to get homeschooling started so here's your eggs let's get going you know but um you know after breakfast you know, lunch and dinner is kind of like on when they're hungry, you know, so a lot of times they'll have their breakfast maybe at 8 a.m. and then about 1 o'clock they start saying, you know, we're hungry now and then we get to that. Um, but it's just, you know, if you think about our Paleolithic days, you think that they ate all the time. Right. I mean, and that's what, um, do you know what the onion is? Yeah, I've actually, I've actually <laughs> taken a uh, writing class oh, really? based around the onion that is yeah. so funny which is just like how sarcastic can you it be? is and they have an article i don't know maybe craig could throw it up there talking about how americans eat one constant meal all day long because they just yeah. never stop and um i laugh because that's the way we used to live craig and i talk about first of all how expensive our food budget used to be because we would go on a say a saturday morning we would go have breakfast uh, at uh, like a bagel shop and get mochas. So we'd have like a bagel sandwich and mochas and then we'd go out for lunch at like Green Mill and have like a pasta meal with, you know, some like s fancy drink or whatever. And then um, we'd order in pizza at dinner. First of all, I don't know how we ate that much because now it just seems like so much yeah. food. Um, but not only that, we spent so much money on this junk food that left us hungrier in the end because when blood sugar goes up, it's a falling blood sugar that causes hunger. So even if it's still up here, if you go to like a Chinese buffet, eat a lot of white rice, your blood sugar's up here. When it starts to fall, and it could be soon after you ate at that buffet, that falling blood sugar is going to cause you to be hungry. Your belly is still full, but you feel but hungry. Absolutely, always. So, oh yeah, let's go get that ice cream cone. And we did that. That's why I laugh. I mean, I would... I would skip lunch so I get get like this huge ice cream cone. Craig remembers this. We were in um, Oregon, Port Portland, or no, it wasn't Portland. It was um, on the Haystack Rock area, and they had this great ice cream shop. I'm like, I'm not eating lunch because I'm going to get this huge ice cream. It's like all these big mistakes that we made, and yeah. you know. So I'm not judging. I was there myself. Yeah. So we got a question, uh, Stacy, Maria. When will you, when will you be doing another group thing at your home like last November? I don't know. Is this the Hawaii home? No, this is in Wisconsin. I teach um, ketogenic classes. Like it's like a two hour. Because like, I'll let's come go. to one in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Stacy, should we do one in Hawaii? <laughs> we'll be right on the beach and we'll just let everybody come, you know? Um, but I don't do them too often. I am a very private, quiet person. So um, I'll think about that though. But if people want to come, let me know. And Tamara says, love keto cooking. <laughs> good, awesome. good. And again, I'm not judging. I'm just, I'm trying to encourage you to like get on the keto train and keep those wheels a rolling. Yeah, that's awesome. Can you read it? Louis? I wish I could go there. Uh, Stacy. Uh, oh, uh, I wish I could go. Yeah. You can see a lot better than I can see. <laughs> I put in the new contacts. I'm like, I, I probably look so stupid. Like, no. Uh, um, so we're at the low carb conference here in Breckenridge, mm -hmm. Colorado. Um, any any learnings from any of the sessions or the discussions? This this is actually a pretty awesome conference because it's small, so the interaction with speakers yeah. is just it's 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 a whole different way than big conferences. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it, it's just starting out. I'm afraid it's probably will grow, but I guess I just did a question and answer session, and this poor woman was there. Her son has type one, and her she started doing keto his a1c went from 11 which it was 11.3 which means he's in a very terrible inflammatory state to five it was uh like 5.1 which is fantastic but the endocrinologists are telling her so where are the facts that keto is helping him and she's like look at his a1c you know and she's like yeah it's just what's going on in his body but they wanted to see facts that keto is actually helping heal type one diabetics. And so they got in like a two hour argument. I just wish that hospitals were more on it and supportive of these parents and the truth about nutrition rather than 
you know, you know what it, you know what it's like. Oh, yeah. I guess like Craig and I, we were discussing this in Hawaii about um, what is going in intravenously, constantly, twenty four hours a day, because it's easier than feeding them throughout the day. It's just constantly being pumped through your veins, and it's just crap. Well, like I told Craig, no, just let me go. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's just it's poison. Yeah. Um, so Brian Williamson in the last podcast, his his uh, son has epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And he went to a neurologist who's very good at what she does, he said. Uh, but it was a just a fleeting comment when he was walking out. That, and, and she said, hey, you know, I, you might want to try that keto because it's been uh, found to be pretty good for some epileptic uh, patients. But kind of just walking out. So he went home and just researched it completely. Um, and his son is like, his, the number of seizures have just decreased uh -huh. like 95%, right? But he said the part that makes him angry is that to her it was just a little, Side note. by the way, yeah. if you think about it, and it's it's basically that and the medication has mm -hmm. really fixed his son's issue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so. Our bodies know how to fix yeah, themselves. Absolutely, they really do. Yeah. But if you look at, um, you know, talking to some African um, immigrants, when they go to our grocery stores, they almost have mental breakdowns because they're like, they don't even know what this stuff is. You know, they don't know this this grocery store life of all of this packaged foods. They now put bananas in plastic packages. Craig, what? Craig says dextrose and soybean oil for those in coma. And Anne says, what is keto? Thanks. So. Oh, yeah. We just... Yeah, we, we, we covered the keto thing. It's a high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carbohydrate approach. So if you go back when we stop this, watch the whole thing because we go over what is keto. You really want to – this is how we eat. This is how my family eats. Um, this is how uh, my husband and I have gotten healthy, and so many others have gotten – go to mariamindbodyhealth.com, and it'll tell you all about keto. Very, very countercultural. What do you mean? Keto. Oh, yes. It, it's the opposite of everything you've ever been told about a diet. It is. Nutrition. Because, but not only that, like I was talking about the estrogens, everything you put on your skin is. Yeah, goes, talk, talk about that. Yeah, yeah. We think about, we're so concerned about what we put in our mouth. We need to be concerned about what we put on our skin because that gets absorbed by the bloodstream. Your skin is your largest absorbing organ, right? And what was scary is seeing people slather. I have sunscreen, but it's like zinc. It's like nothing else. So even though I look kind of dark, I had zinc on all the time. Otherwise, that Hawaii sun burns me. Um, but people were doing those sprays, which are very estrogenic. And it actually is, there's signs by the coral reef saying, please don't spray your sunscreen or put the sunscreen on and then come into the coral reefs because they're dying. And I experienced that myself. There's like very little fish going on. That is wild. It's sad. But um, makeup, um, th three days of women um, changing their makeup from these chemical things like MAC and all of that, um, their estrogen levels decreased by 78%. That's crazy. And if you think about breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer in men, those are all estrogenic dominant cancers. So it's not just about food. It's also about all the chemicals. So... It's honestly like the television, you have to like just skip through all the commercials because, you know, you go to Target and everything there is just. Yeah. And, you know, for women, you guys got to put a lot more stuff on them. Than... <laughs> yeah. Perfume is estrogenic, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, I, I react to milk and wheat. Uh, so I need to fix my diet. So you want to talk about the reactions of... Uh, yeah, and, and... and I'm a big proponent of... Um, so gluten is in none of my recipes, not a one. So it's a total gluten-free diet, but I also have books out there that are totally dairy-free. For some people, I'm from the dairy state, Wisconsin, hello. Um, but my last cookbook, The Cleanse, is totally dairy-free um, just because I find... Uh, and that's why I call it a cleanse, because it's dairy and not free because it is such a common allergen um, and it's very inflammatory. Um, so I try to cut that out of people's diet. And so should you give up, I think the question from Anne is soy. Oh yeah, soy, nobody should do soy. Soy is very estrogenic. I, I almost skip over that because I you know, forget that it's not just common knowledge. Um, soy, um, 
yeah, it, it's super estrogenic. It's, it's something that, that, that should be number one to, out of, and it's all GMO made. I mean, um, living in Wisconsin, you drive by these fields of soy and corn, you know, and if you look up the rows, you don't notice any weeds. And that's because, yeah. you know, it has that capability to kill, you know, any animal that's trying to eat the plant and blow their intestines up. And so corn and soy, all of that type of stuff, it's not what we, you know, think of as, you know, well, the Native Americans ate a lot of corn or, you know, the Asians ate a lot of soy. Well, think again, because first of all, it was really only about 0.2% of their diet. And um, it was fermented soy, which is not what is in <laughs> Kashi Golden. Got to think again. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jimmy, um, I'm in the UK, so watching this before bed. Thanks for all the info. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. <laughs> so, Maria, the... What are the non-negotiables? So you just got to get out of your diet. Sugar, soy, gluten, um, corn? Yeah. I well, don't eat any, any grain. Corn. I mean, people think of it as vegetable. It's a grain. A grain. Grain. But there's like hidden words like maltodextrin. That's corn. That's going to be in a lot of things like stevia in the raw and um, Splenda. Not that I recommend Splenda, but, you know, and the big, you know, diet fad is to use Splenda instead of sugar. That's maltodextrin, which is higher on the glycemic index and sugar, but that's a whole other topic. So the question I, I always get is, um, what about fruit? Oh. Yeah, we, Craig, we eat a lot of fruit. We love cucumber, avocados, um, olives, tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the fruit they're talking about. I don't think so either. <laughs> I think they're talking about pineapple, mango. No, no uh, my kids don't even eat that. What's your take on strawberries, blueberries? My kids can have those. Just in small portions. Yep, yep. Um, I work with a lot of clients that um, especially diabetics. So we're trying to get off insulin and things like that. Um, one I just talked to on the phone, if she has a half of, we're, we're testing her, right? If she, she loves her berries and she didn't want to give them up. I said, okay, so we're making a compromise. If she had a half of a cup, half a cup is not a lot. Not a lot. She, her glucose, she had to take insulin. If she stuck to a fourth of a cup, she was fine. She's like, that's so little. It wasn't worth it. Exactly. And yeah. it, curbed her sweet tooth to want other carbohydrates. And that's the thing, like in Hawaii, a woman approached me, she's like, so if you don't eat sweet potatoes, how do you get all the nutrients that are in sweet potatoes? And I was like, I'm on vacation. I really don't want to go there right now. <laughs> you know, just because she was judging me and I, you know. Get off my property. Yeah, right, <laughs> Shh, get off my beach. <laughs> anyway, um, sweet potatoes, it's a gateway drug to wanting more carbohydrates. And I see that all the time that people eating keto, they get to their goal weight and they start adding in carbohydrates and even just paleo carbohydrates like sweet potato, carrots brought on their sweet tooth so bad that they went back to their old lifestyle. That's interesting, yeah. And that's how I feel. Like I just can't even go there because in my talk, I talk about how I was an addict. I was a food addict and um, that is just a place I don't want to go. Yeah, that's cool. The balls in motion stay in motion, so I got to keep on the keto train. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's funny you say avocados and uh, yeah, because most people. I do have a, a keto fruit salad, and it's a, basically a Greek salad made with um, julienne uh, cucumbers, and then there's olives in there and capers and um, some sliced tomatoes, and then you top it with feta cheese and a Greek dressing, and it's a fruit salad. Yeah, but you won't think of it because it's not sweet. As opposed to a big bowl of fruit. Yeah. Yeah, so we, I apologize. We have this on landscape mode, so we can only see two, a couple comments at a time, and they roll really fast. So. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy says uh, uh, quinoa. Quinoa, no. Way too high in carbohydrates. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think they sold that as a – they try to sell that as, like, the perfect replacement. Yeah. No, it's marketing. I don't know. I would never. I just, I just learned how to pronounce it this quinoa. year. Quinoa? Yeah. <laughs> I have a quinoa salad, but there's no quinoa in it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, so what projects are you working on now? Um, well, I'm working constantly with clients. I have <laughs> a whole list of people that I have to call as soon as I get home. I was and trying... you do it online. Yeah, I do. Right? Um, so tell, tell them like if somebody wanted to work with you. Yeah. Um, I have someone um, in India right now and then we work for a month and we go back and forth and we do via Skype or, you know, if you're in the United States, we'll do via phone or whatever you want. 
but we um, you know get you on the right path and get you on the right supplements to help heal faster if you want to go there um, I am a proponent of you know certain supplements like magnesium and uh, probiotics to help with the gut flora and things like that um, but other than that I'm also um, I have a comfort food book coming out the first of May which is really I don't want to ever say that any of my books are my favorite but this one was like I told you I love food and this was my favorite making like waffles and you know all of this uh, bomba burgers all of your childhood favorites and, and you know like little corn dogs things like that um, so that's coming out in May um, I'm also um, finishing handing in my manuscript for a restaurant keto foods so like Oh, that's um, awesome. You know, a lot of Asian dishes like pad thai and all of those takeout foods that you love or Olive Garden, Seven Cheese, Z uh, Ziti, you know, that type of stuff. So a twist on that. And then um, at the end of the year, the dairy-free keto, quick and easy. So very fast, very few ingredients, quick and easy will come out in December. Oh, that's cool. And uh, Renell, I believe I'm saying that correctly, looking forward to your new book. So. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, so that's and awesome. And we'll keep doing giveaways. I'm going to give them to him so he can give them away. I yeah. promise. This yeah, is that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, what else? Anything, any other questions that yeah. anybody has? Otherwise, we'll... Let's see. White. Oh, Katie. Oh, she joined yeah. Hello, me. Katie. I no work, question. I work with Katie. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Yeah, no, Katie's, uh, she's been uh, doing some intermittent fasting and doing some things. And oh, she's, cool. she's, uh, I think she's lost like, Maybe 25 pounds nice. recently. Nice. So. You know, when you get rid of that sugar, that part, that's the first step. Just like get it out and don't be brainwashed by you need sugar for glucose. But I want to ask you a question. Sure. Flip the table. Working in a hospital setting and being kind of a leader, you know, right. what is your biggest frustration when you walk into that hospital? Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is every hospital I've ever been in. I mean, it's yeah. like the obesity, the, the, the workers. I mean, not you, Katie. No, not yeah, not yeah, <laughs> but just in general. Um, I mean, I don't know. Most of the workers are unhealthy. They because they, they're not sleeping and they eat terrible. Yeah, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of sleep. I do the, the dorky blue blocker, blocker glasses. Me too. I do it all. We yeah, yeah, blacking out the blue light. I get nine, ten hours of sleep. So do you really? Yeah, even with kids, I go to bed when they go to bed. I go to bed about eight p.m. and I get up at six. On the beach, you just fall asleep on the beach, or what? No, I'm usually. <laughs> I mean, it it gets dark there at about six, six thirty. Now it was getting later and later, but yeah, I think the frustration and, and kind of what Jason Fung was talking about. You know, he's he's um, not a conventional type of doctor, and most doctors just do treat the symptoms. They, you know, uh, your high your blood pressure is high. Here's a pill. You have type two diabetes. Here's a pill. Uh, there's no talk whatsoever about prevention nutrition. Yeah. There's, there's no talk. Yeah. Um, there's a, a proverb talking about how when someone's floating down the river drowning, you just throw them a life raft. But then all of a sudden all these people keep coming down the river drowning and you just keep throwing life yeah. rafts at them. But nobody's looking upstream. Like, why are these people drowning? What's right. going on upstream? Yeah. Like. You know, let's fix the problem before they start drowning. And our body's really smart. It knows how to fix itself with the proper nutrition. Um, and again, like all of these chemicals that, you know, Jergens Natural Glow and all of these lies on television, you really have to like put your full, not just blue blockers on, but blinders yeah, on because yeah. they, it is just marketing lies. And the crazy part is, I mean, when, I've been in healthcare for 20 years now, and wheelchairs were wheelchairs when I got into healthcare. Now there's wheelchairs that accommodate the thousand pound person, and they're so wide, yeah. you can almost fit a couple people in. But I think healthcare, it's, it's gonna be, I mean, we can't, we can't, as a country, we cannot afford healthcare now. It's gonna be unsustainable. Oh, yeah. So many problems from the obesity. Yeah. It, it's, it, we're gonna have to do something different. Absolutely, and it starts, it starts with you because Honestly, watching these families, when I take my kids to the zoo, and even when they were really young, and they had tiny little legs, they walked. They walked with me. 
but all of these kids are sitting in strollers all day. My kids would run to every animal, so excited. Yeah. But these kids sitting in strollers popping Cheetos all day, like, I'm sorry, that was not a life that I didn't want to be that mom. My kids are active. Um, kids should be active for hours throughout the day. That one man slide was talking about kids should be very physically active for at least three hours. But now when my kids were down by the pool, I was the naggy mom that they despised because I wouldn't let them go play with the kids that had their iPads by the pool on a beautiful sunny afternoon. Just staring at them. Just staring yeah. at them. And first of all, I don't like the pool because it's just a bunch of chemicals. So I'm like, we're going to the beach. And then that yeah. made me an even more naggy mom. But they still, they had fun once we got there. Yeah. So Stacy, uh, oh, what makeup and lotions do you use, Maria? Um, I'm going to put my plug out there. I love Beauty Counter. Um, <laughs> that's the sunscreen. We actually had them mail us a big box of stuff. Beauty Counter has, they test and they actually like, um, the only makeup I wear is mascara and they actually took years to three years to make this mascara because it didn't have any chemicals, but they want to make sure it worked good too. Um, but so that's what I use. Um, I also use just plain coconut oil too. So if you don't want to spend the money on that type of thing, which is totally fine, um, they also um, just use coconut oil, which works great. But that's what another thing that bugged me too was like dryer sheets. When I would snorkel in the ocean, this one day I found like 20 dryer sheets all stuck to these sea anemones. Yeah. And I was I couldn't dive down deep enough to pick them off. The dryer sheets are so estrogenic and full of chemicals. I can't even sleep on them now, but I grew up with that smell. That's um, crazy. Yeah, but you can buy just wool dryer balls from Amazon for like dollars. And then if you want a scent, so that would take care of the whole call, you know, the all the static electricity. But if you wanted a natural scent, just put some sort of oil, essential oil on it yeah. instead. So Mary, uh, a friend has uh, high blood pressure after having a, hysterectomy, she's 55 and eats a low fat diet and is watching her sodium even on meds, her BP is kind of high. What's the best thing she should be doing? And she did say she was on a low fat diet. Yeah, okay, so first of all, we would wanna to switch to keto because um, that's gonna help her so much more. The hysterectomy probably caused her to have low progesterone. Um, that's why she's probably having those sleep issues. She's waking up at 2, 3 a.m. like, bing, I'm awake. There's a problem if you're not sleeping good at night. You want to find out what it is. Um, but the blood pressure, like I was mentioning magnesium before, um, especially if you're eating a low-fat diet with a lot of carbohydrates, it takes about 54 milligrams of magnesium to process one, or yeah, to process one gram of sugar. So if you're eating a lot of grams of sugar, which if you're eating low-fat, you are, you're going to be using and utilizing a lot of magnesium, causing you to be very low in magnesium. On blood pressure, um, magnesium helps relax those blood vessels. You wanna get a good quality one, so, and blood pressure is naturally highest in the morning. So you'd wanna do about 400 milligrams right away when she wakes up, and then a 400 um, at bedtime. It usually helps extreme with sleep. It's naturally relaxing. So I would say I have your friend Get a hold of Maria. Yeah, I mean, there's more to it. There's a lot more to it. And I don't want to just give you know, yeah, nutrition. Yeah. You know, it's really complicated. But that's something that I believe is harmless to say. Yeah. Call and, your doctor. Yeah, that's actually, we talked about that this morning. So if you, are, if you do have a medical condition, you don't want to just be doing stuff without keeping your doctor in the loop or getting his, mm -hmm. his or her advice. Because they could be giving you a medication that I don't know about that could cause right, a reaction right. with um, some sort of herb. Uh, Jenny says, I have too much estrogen. What can I do? You could contact, contact, contact me because I can't tell you right now because you just told me not to. Because there, <laughs> right. there are some things that you can take to detox those estrogens. First of all, think about what you're putting on your skin. Also, we talked about getting rid of those foods that are estrogenic, and especially wine and all of that. But um, you want to detox that liver of bad estrogens, and there's certain herbs and supplements that you can take to help that happen faster. But you need to understand her background. I want to understand yeah. your background too. So just you know, if you, um, yeah, if you go to the blog, I have. I'm always helping. So go there or on Facebook at Keto Adapted. Um, yeah, she's got a great website. We we yeah. uh, when I say we, it's my husband and I. We don't have anybody else help you. 
the only reason why Craig also helps me is because most of the time if I'm with a client or if I'm you know doing this and I can't answer he'll text me the question oh, that's and cool. I'll answer it right away so it's it's a team effort and it's just so we can answer your questions as fast as possible yeah awesome uh, we got okay so thank you uh, enjoying a enjoying this broadcast a lot and thank oh, you good. yeah this is cool so um, we've been going for quite a while. Yeah. I think we have time for maybe one more question. Sure. What's your burning questions? We're here. So while the, while we're waiting, tell them your resources one more time. So um, your website oh, and, yeah, and, and the you. different things you offer. Okay. Um, I have a website with a lot of free recipes and information out there at mariamindbodyhealth.com. I also have a subscription site, keto-adapted.com. And that ranges from $5 a month up to, I don't even know what it is, but you, we do every Sunday evening, or afternoon I should say, we get together and do, um, I lead a group meeting. So we all talk about you know, our goals for the week and it's a support group, but also I do your personal macros. And um, so it's that type of a thing. It's like I'm holding your hand because I really want awesome. it to work. Shirley says. Oh, oh, it says tell them your your Sunday class. Oh, Shirley, Shirley loves the Sunday class. Does keto exclude eggs? No, nope. keto. I mean, it depends. If your egg, if you have egg allergies, then I have egg free um, meal plans. But I love eggs. I could live off of eggs. I was actually a little sad when they wouldn't let me take my eggs this morning. They wouldn't let because I didn't have time. I had to get ready to be uh, down there at seven thirty, and she's like, "You can't take with eggs." I was like, "What?" So I had to try to get some later in the day. Um, uh, best foods to support system while having oh chemo treatments oh well it it's it's really complex again like I would want to work personally with Definitely, that person yeah. um, because there's a lot of I don't even what happens is you have a lot of bad cells and you want to learn how to get rid of the bad cells by with certain things, fasting and things like yeah. it purges those bad cells, but then feasting really well to grow new healthy cells. And so everything you're eating has to be able to grow those new healthy cells. I do recommend probiotics in that case because 70% of your immune system comes from your gut. And that's why you want a really healthy gut. And that's why keto is awesome because it helps yeah. to heal that gut. I would definitely recommend it. Ah, I work with a lot of sadly yeah. cancer, whether it be children or adults. Yeah. Uh, my LOL increased on keto. LDL. Oh, LDL. <laughs> what do I do? Okay, that's the last. Oh, Craig, oh. if you're still online, give them a link to our uh, post about that because that's really complicated and I'd love to help you. Right, right. It's a simple answer that I can help. If you contact me, I'll just give you my answer there. Yeah. I don't want to go on to that right now. Well, awesome. Awesome. Um, thank are you going to ski at all? No, are you? No. No. <laughs> I have Hawaii clothes here. I'm in tank tops. Everybody else is in sweaters. And it is, like Maria said, it is cold. But I'm it... getting my cold therapy on, right, Shirley? Shirley Germain, we know we talk about cold therapy a lot and how that helps with your mitochondria. So I'm going to show them before we sign off. I am... Snowy and show, and and show them the. Uh, let's go to Hawaii next time. Yeah, so that's what it's looking like out there. It's it's snowing. It's just supposed to warm up. Yeah, when I leave. All right. So thank you, everybody, and uh, uh, please give us your feedback. We appreciate it. Bye.